All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP Chromebook X360. This is model 14C-CC0013DX, all right? So there's likely some hidden screws under here, so let's go ahead and try and remove this rubber piece here. Okay, make sure when you're peeling it up that you're also peeling up the adhesive. HP, sometimes their adhesive separates from the rubber piece. Make sure that you are peeling up the adhesive as well, not just the rubber. Let's see if there's anything under this one, and there is, so let's go ahead and peel that up as well. Keep the rubber pieces um, in order. You don't want to mix them up because sometimes they are slightly different size as well. Okay, so we're going to now remove all the screws from the bottom here. <clears throat> These seem to be JS1 screws, and then it looks like there's two little covers here probably hiding some other screws. So again, J1 or JS1 screwdriver. Let's go ahead and remove the screws on the bottom. You want to keep the screws in order, again, because they can be different size, shape, and lengths, and if you mix them up, you can damage the computer. All right, again, these are J1 screws, not PH or Phillips screws. You can possibly get away with using a Phillips or PH screwdriver, but uh, there's a bit more risk that you'll end up stripping it out. So if you're going to use a PH screwdriver, make sure you're pushing down hard so that the screwdriver doesn't jump out of the screw. And if it does skip out of the screw once, twice, stop right there. Don't, don't use that screwdriver anymore and make sure you get the right screwdriver because if you keep trying it, you're going to strip the whole screw out and then you're not going to be able to get it. All right, so I think there's two screws right there that we're going to remove. I'm going to use a tiny flathead screwdriver to try and pop those out. Okay, so... Sometimes it helps to kind of push on the center of it to kind of pull it away from the edge. And then we're going to try and pop this out. And we're probably going to end up denting the little outside ring of it a little bit, but there's not really any other way to get that out that I know of. Okay. So, yeah, this one doesn't want to come out. I don't know if I have anything else. Let me try with this little acupuncture kind of needle and see if we can get this yeah, it doesn't want to go. It's just going to bend my needle. So we are going to have to use this flathead and just make a kind of a little ding in the plastic. So there we go. Get that out. Okay. I don't know if there's a special way to do that. If anyone knows, let me know. All right. So we're going to push on this again and try and get that little piece to go out of the way a little bit so we can get a little bit of it in the edge at least. And then we're going to try and prop that out. And come on. I hate these little plastic screw covers that they put on here. Okay, and come on. Yep, this doesn't want to come out. Oh, give me a second. There we go, got the second one out. Okay. Then we're going to switch back over to the JS1 or J1 screwdriver and remove the two screws from the front. Give me a second, I'm getting a phone call. So I'll take that and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. Alright, I'm back. Let's get the other screw out here. Okay, and then let's pop this open. The customer was telling me to just try a battery reset on it because it doesn't power up and if that doesn't work then it's a motherboard so it won't be worth repairing but anyways after getting all the screws usually i'll get my fingernails between the gap of the base and there and we'll push on this and let's see if it pops out because some models are built differently you don't want to push on the touchpad area you just want to push on the palm rest area so go ahead and go on this side and do the same okay there you go i hear it popping out i'll flip this over here you can see now we have a gap and then once you have that gap, you can kind of get your fingers in there, pull it up, and then I'll use my finger along this and do that. All right, and obviously you don't have to use fingernails to do this, but they're free, they grow. You don't have to worry about buying them. So if you need tools to work on it, just let your fingernails grow. But there you go, we got that. And then the back here, you wanna kind of same thing, just run it along, it might get stuck, you might have to wiggle it, but there we go. There's the inside, okay. Next, we're gonna go ahead and, like the customer said, try disconnecting the battery here. So there's these two wings here. We're gonna grab the wings and we're just gonna wiggle that to pull it out, just like that. Keep wiggling, 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 and I can see the gold pins are slowly starting to show, so there we go, and there we go. All right, if you're replacing the battery, make sure that you put it with the same way where these gold pins are facing up. Battery model number is here, uh, SI03XL. I believe that's an I, so. 
It could be S103XL if you can't find it, but I think it's SI03XL. Okay, um, I don't want to start pulling things out, but it looks like there's an M.2 SSD in here, and the RAM is most likely soldered to the motherboard, so I'm not going to be really taking things out, but you can look in here and see what you see. Speaker connectors here. Um, looks like keyboard connector. I can't tell 100% what's what. This is probably a fingerprint reader. Yeah, FP. This is probably the touchpad, trackpad, uh, keyboard backlight. They actually have little labels there, KBBL, so yeah. And then you have this cable going in here. This is the LCD LVDS connector here. Uh, wireless card is soldered to the motherboard, so you can't replace that. Then you got the USB-C port, power button, and the volume buttons, as well as this lock. Um, I think that's a camera lock button. All connected on this own, it's separate board. So you have that. The thing is, I don't know if the power button's broken, because that's in here too, so... It could be the power button's dead there. But anyways, usually after disconnecting the battery, you want to open it up and then press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds to drain any residual power. And then after that, we're going to plug it back in and see if it's going to work. I'm going to hold it a little bit longer just to be safe. Okay. And give it another. We'll give it another five seconds. Okay, that's plenty long. Let's go ahead now and plug this guy in and see what we got. So they brought their charger, so let's try it. Um, the other thing is sometimes a bad charger can cause the problems like that, so I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead and plug this in. Okay. And the charge light did come on with my charger, so let's see if we plug this guy in. It's flashing white right now. I don't know if you can see it. It's flashing white. Oh, that's because there's no battery. So let's go ahead and see if it turns on while it's flashing light. Wait. Nope, power button does absolutely nothing. Okay, let's plug the battery back in. We might end up just putting this thing back together and not fixing it because it is it's looking like motherboard issue. You can see the charge light's orange. I think he said it stays permanently orange and that's a sign that the motherboard's dead. Yep, nothing's happening with the power button. So I think this thing is completely fried. But uh, yeah, not really much else to look at in here. So I guess I'll give it back to the customer, let them decide if they want to have some more work done on it. But it's looking like a dead motherboard, that kind of thing. Um, I can replace the motherboards, but I'm not able to like repair these or diagnose those little components and repair it. So I'm going to leave it at that. Let's get the bottom cover back on, put this thing back together. And yeah, all right, so we just click it all down into place around the outside edges like this. Okay, just like that. And click in the middle as well. And there we go. And you just get all the screws back in and the little rubber feet, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully, this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't do that, it helps a lot also to watch a bunch of my other videos. That way the algorithm knows to share my channel. All right. And that's pretty much it. Get the last screws back in. Put the little rubber feet and the uh, little plastic cover thingies back over the screws. And you're good to go. All right. Okay, so we'll get this in, get that in. To get these, you start with one edge here, get that lined up right, then start working your way towards the center, and then it helps to get the other side in because it stretches, and then just work your way over on both sides to the center, okay? And that way, any stretching will push itself out to the edges. All right, there we go. Let me get the other one. Again, start out at this edge. Okay, get this one, and then get that all in. There we go, and now that we got that, we'll get these two into place. Okay, that one, and the last one. 
And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.